Good afternoon, everybody. Um, I know we've been hearing a lot about pool testing, and uh, I just wanted to offer this uh, brief explanation and um, and request that everybody sort of get on board with pool testing and, and sort of explain why. So, um, so this is all about stopping the spread of the coronavirus, and we know that the the big four sort of uh, things that we've been asked to do, um, we've been really working at diligently. So those things are the masks, the physical distancing, the frequent hand washing, and avoiding large crowds. And we've created the school environment to ensure that that is true all the time. Everybody's wearing a mask. They're all spread out. We have hand sanitizing stations at every room, and we're not bringing the kids together into any large crowds. The other big thing that allows us to stop the spread of the coronavirus is testing and tracking, right? And we don't have anything uh, in process for that or in place for that. Um, so let's just talk about a little bit about why that's important. Um, the asymptomatic carrier, the person who has the coronavirus without knowing it, is the person that we really want to be able to catch early. Um, if they're walking around, they could have this uh, the disease or the, the virus for five to 14 days without knowing it and pro possibly infect a lot of different people again, without anybody being aware of that. So this is the person we want to catch sooner than later. Um, so, you know, we could try to test every single student every week, um, but it's simply cost prohibitive. We can't, we can't do that uh, throughout the district or throughout the school. So that's where pool testing comes in. Um, so in pool testing, instead of testing, say, 25 individuals, right, which will cost a lot of money, we have 25 people put a sample into the same bucket, right, and we do one test for that whole bucket. So at East Hampton High School, we have assigned 11 pools throughout the building, and with about 5 to 25, somewhere between 5 and 25 people within each pool. So now, instead of trying to process some 200 tests, which would be all the people, if we have a full cohort of students and all of our staff, we're close to 200 people in the building. Uh, instead of doing 200 individual tests, we only need to do 11 tests because we've got 11 buckets, right, that we're sending out. So we save a lot of money, and this actually makes this testing doable, whereas before it was not possible. So what happens after we collect all those samples into the buckets? The buckets get sent out and they get tested individually. If one of the buckets comes back uh, positive, well, if it's negative, then no one in that pool was carrying the coronavirus on, coronavirus on that day. So a negative test, everybody's good, everybody in that pool. If one of the buckets comes back with a positive test, um, then everyone in the pool is notified immediately and they're asked to stay home from school. Then they're invited to come in for a drive up rapid test um, that we do right out in the in our driveway and that's the uh, the binax permission slip that we uh, gave everybody um, when they came in if you signed on that that's giving us permission to conduct this rapid test two conditions that we would do it if somebody came down with symptoms while they were in school and if a pool test came back with a positive result then we would do the rapid test so we need the permission to do that as well um, but if we do that, then we can pinpoint and trace who needs to be quarantined immediately, right? And so that asymptomatic carrier um, that has now has been identified early and has been isolated and cannot spread the virus any further within the building. If we can do that, then we'll have added to our tools that we already have in our toolbox, the, the, the big four. And now we're really being able to control, mitigate the spread of the virus, keep people safe. And ultimately, we're one step closer to bringing everybody back to school under safe conditions. So the process in the building, um, every Tuesday, we'll do our pool testing. Um, students will be given a swab and they will swab themselves. So let me just be clear, the swabbing is only in the lower part of the nostril. It's not the jamming way up, you know, and, and stabbing yourself in the brain thing. It's really just a few swabs, a few um, circles in the bottom part of the nostril. Um, all the student has to do is that, put their swab in a bucket, a little test tube kind of thing. Somebody else comes around, seals it up, takes it away. And then by Thursday or Friday, we get all the pool results. 
Uh, and once we get the pool results, now we know if there's a positive, we can um, isolate those students, ask them to stay home and conduct the rapid tests. Um, and if everybody's, if uh, all the pool tests come back negative, we know that nobody that was tested it was carrying the, the virus on that day of testing. So each cohort will get tested when they're here, which is every other week. So I'm just imagining that when these results come back, we can share the results, obviously not individual results, but we can say, um, look, all the tests came back negative. And that will provide all of us with tremendous peace of mind, knowing that all the people that got tested, none of them were carrying the coronavirus at the time of testing. That's very reassuring to all of us that have to be in the building every day. Um, and if we do find out that there's a positive case, then again, being able to isolate, do individual testing, um, we can really pinpoint who's carrying it, who's not, isolate them early. That's gonna make all of us feel better about having our students in the building and for, of course, all the staff as well. So knowing is certainly a lot better than not knowing. So that brings us to the consent. Um, students uh, need to have parental consent to participate in the pool testing. And there is a website. Um, I included it in the body of the email that this video is accompanied with, uh, as well as um, the frequently asked questions that the superintendent has put together, um, which goes into much more detail than I was able to cover here. Um, but we need parents to consent for their students to participate in the pool testing. And this brings up a really important point. If I have 200 people in the building and only 70 agree to the pool testing, then it's not going to be nearly as effective as if we had all 200 involved. The more people we have involved in the pool testing, the more effective it is at tracing, isolating, and being able to stop the spread of the of the uh, of the virus. So I really, really want to encourage all of our students and all of our parents to come on board with the pool testing. I think it would be a great way to help us all um, feel better about um, being here every day. Um, so there's the link. Uh, it's here in this presentation, but again, it's in the body of the email. Um, when you get in, they'll ask you for an access code. Here is the access code. It's element hyphen east, all lowercase, all one wordish um, with a hyphen, no spaces there. So element dash east is the access code. Um, and if you have any questions or if you have any uh, difficulty getting on, feel free to give us a call. and We'll try to help you out. So uh, thanks very much for watching. Um, again, I, I urge you to, to participate and have your students participate in the pool testing. Um, the more involved, the, the more uh, effective it will be. Thanks, for, thanks very much. And now I just got to find my cursor. There we go.